Great to see you once again. Welcome back to Physics with Ben. And this is a continuation of the video on measurement of heat energy. In the previous video, we looked at how to determine the specific heat capacity of a substance by the method of mixtures, where we look at the principle of moment. I forgot something in that video I would love to explain here quickly. Uh, the, the physics behind uh, the building of the calorimeter. There are some questions that they will ask you, why is the calorimeter covered with the lead on top here? Why is it built this way? Uh, every little thing you see here has a physics behind it. We have uh, modes of heat transfer, uh, conduction, uh, radiation and the convection. Uh, even though uh, heat is transferred through these modes, we also have heat loss through these modes. A calorimeter is a closed system in physics. What do we mean by a closed system? A system that is very stingy. <laughs> a system that cannot allow anything to come in or anything to go out. A very selfish system. A system that will not allow heat to come in or heat energy to go out is what we call the calorimeter. Now, I want to explain how it is built this way. The calorimeter is covered with a lead, this guy, to prevent heat loss by evaporation and convection. To prevent heat loss by evaporation and convection, if I'm correct. Yes, I'm correct. Now, the calorimeter is lagged. Do you see this? The, we call this the lagging of the calorimeter. The calorimeter is lagged to prevent heat loss through conduction. With this, heat cannot be lost through this guy through conduction. The calorimeter is covered with silver in and out. There is silver in and out. It is built this way to prevent heat loss or heat gain through radiation. I hope that is a word of knowledge for you. Now, we want to concentrate on how to determine the specific heat capacity of a substance using electrical method. Right. How to determine the specific heat? How to how to determine the specific heat capacity of a substance using electrical method? Oh, I'll quickly draw something here to explain that. Uh, let's suppose this is a metallic block whose specific heat capacity uh, want to be determined. What happens here is that. Uh, this, this box, this block, a hole is bored in here, another hole somewhere here, yes, and then that, this card is, this is a block, this is a block, a metallic block, metallic block. Oh, this is the block. I hope that's cool. Yes, that's cool. Now, uh, liquid, liquid, uh, let's say uh, oil is dropped in here. The oil is dropped in here to enhance what we call thermal conductivity. Because if you just carry the 
your thermometer and you insert into this guy without any liquid here, it, it, it won't make any sense. So what happens is that uh, liquid is dropped into this place here and here to enhance, uh, to give room for what we call in physics thermal conductivity. So we, uh, the heating coil is now inserted here. The heating coil is inserted. And the heating coil is connected to a power source. Yes, it's connected to a power source. And then the thermometer is also, it will also drop oil here. Now, before all these things are done, when the hole is drilled on both sides, before you drop in the oil and the heater, first, the mass of the metal is recorded in kilogram. Are we together? Now, the, 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 the liquid, the mass of the liquid is, is neglected because it is negligible. So we don't uh, take note of mass of the liquid as we do in the other top of the video, mass of the water. We, we always neglect mass of the liquid. So the, the heating coil is connected to, to a power source. Let's, uh, this is a power source, something like this. Uh, this is plus negative plus negative. Let's just draw a simple circuit diagram here. Um, yep, a simple circuit diagram like this. And then your ammeter to measure the electric current. Um, the heating coil is connected um, here. Yes, it's connected here. Let's call this here. And then Time taken for the current to flow is also there. And this is the key to the switch. So the second, this, uh, and then here is a, sorry, let me give room for, this is the thermometer. The thermometer is inserted here to record the highest temperature. Yes. And then this is the, the circuit. Yeah, this this arrangement, this arrangement. So mass of the block is measured initially, followed by the the initial temperature of this liquid that is dropped in here to enhance what we call thermal conductivity is measured. So we call it theta i. Now the next thing is that uh. The, the, the circuit is switched on, it's closed, and then the heat is generated, the current will flow through here, and then this uh, heater will get heated. And you know when electric current is flowing through a circuit, it generates heat energy. And of course, the time taken for this current to flow in here, and the heat of this guy is recorded. I would mean. So the initial temperature is is recorded, it's called the theta one, and then when the circuit is switched on, the time taken for the current to flow is also recorded in seconds. And then uh, the highest temperature recorded here is also gotten as theta two. And then the circuit, the circuit is uh, is switched off. Of course, uh, the the voltage generated, let's say this is 9 volts, is also recorded. Now, the heat, the voltage is also recorded. And then, the current is also recorded. So, the quantity of heat energy um, that caused the, the increase in temperature of this guy is given as H is equal to IVT, where I is the current, V is the voltage, and T is the time taken for the current to flow and cause the increase in temperature. And of course, the last thing is the specific heat capacity of the metal. That's it. So from there, we can now come uh, from the equation. We have uh, uh, H is equal to MC 
change in theta. We call this equation star. And here we also say that your, the heat directed into the system is I dt. So we'll write again that H is equal to I v t. We call this equation star star. Now, if you have been watching my videos, I have been talking about the physics of cut and join. That in that physics, uh, you, you make use of simple basic equations to produce advanced complex equations that are used in solving very, very difficult questions. That the condition for you to equate an equation with another equation to produce an, an, an advanced equation is this. One, the two equations must have the same SI units. Two, uh, the two equations must be used in the same condition. So we are free to say that uh, equate equation star with equation star star. So this implies that why? Because H is in joules and also this, also, uh, this other H is also in joules. So we are free to say that uh, MC change in theta is equal to IVT. And you also need to know that this IV is the power generated in this circuit. Yes, the power generated in the circuit P is given as what? IV in the unit of watts. That's it. So we are free to say that MC the theta is equal to IVT. Are we good? So if we make this C, uh, which is, uh, I'm going to customize right now. So I'm going to customize this equation right now. So this also implies that the mass of the metal, specific capacity of the of the metal uh, times change in temperature, uh, which is okay. That change in temperature is equal to what time taken for the current to flow. I mean, the current that flows through the circuit times the voltage supply, maybe nine volts, uh, times the time taken for the current to flow through the circuit. Now, we are going to make our CM the subject of the formula. So this implies that um, uh, CM is equal to IVT divided by mass of the metal times change in temperature. So your CM is equal to IVT divided by mass of the metal. Your change in temperature, change in theta, is given as theta 2 minus theta 1. That's it. So you come back here, you write um, into theta 2 minus theta 1. So this equation uh, is the equation you are going to use to determine the specific heat capacity of a substance using the electrical method. Uh, to this, we have come to the end of this particular video. I am going to produce the next video, which will be on latent heat change of states, latent heat of fusion, latent heat of vaporization, specific latent heat, specific latent heat of fusion. And then uh, the next video will be for all the calculations from what I have done from video 1 down to video 3. God bless you. Can you subscribe to Physics with Ben? Share this video. Let it go viral. I have produced students who have good grades in physics. I is in light to this that I believe that if I come to if I come on the internet, I can also help other students who are not with me in this school get good grades. The Lord bless you as you do so. Bye-bye. See you in the next video.